Hey everybody, Dare Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Dangerous Relationship. We are starting on Taiga Saiba today. I'm going to read two episodes, I think. Not in the same video, but uh, just recording two at the moment. I really, he's my favorite guy in here. I can tell because he's just got that attitude and all. Not to mention he's gorgeous and has awesome hair. And I just felt I needed a little bit of threatening, so I wanted to start him right now. <laughs> so let's go to his main volume here. Chapter 1. The Unshakable Woman. I guess that's me. That's right. You can't shake me. I am unfappable. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. What? You need me to step in for you? Oh, sorry. He's a good kid, so it'll be a piece of cake. I knew I could count on you. Later. Wait a second! Only the dreary beeping of a disconnected phone came from the line. This isn't fair. The person on the phone was one of my stylist co-workers. Unfortunately, they double booked and couldn't be there for Taiga Saiba. He's so nice, there's no one I'd rather work for. I remember how lovely my co-worker made Taiga sound over the phone. It was nothing less than a complete lie. I even love his name though, Taiga Saiba. That is such an awesome name. You won't speak a word of this to anyone, or else. We might as well have been thinking of two separate people. This was supposed to be my day off, and now I'm stuck with Taiga? I reluctantly rolled out of bed and began to get ready for work. Today's guest is dominating polls nationwide. That's right, it's none other than the wildly popular Taiga Saiba. When I heard his name mentioned on TV, I spat out the water I was drinking all over. You're so popular these days, I can't go a few hours without seeing your face on TV. It's all thanks to my awesome fans. I'd be nothing without them. Damn it, I hate singing crap. Why are the fans always so damn loud anyway? What kind of star says that about their fans? I remembered his nasty language while my eyes were glued to the television. The camera zoomed in on his face as he cheerfully smiled. When he looked straight into the camera, my heart skipped a beat. If I hadn't experienced his dark side, I might have adored him like so many others. Work is work. It doesn't matter what he's like to me. As I went to power off the TV, the program was heading to commercial break. For a split second before the break started, Taiga looked absolutely dismal. Oh, Does he really hate his job or is he just stressed? To my eyes, his face looked strained and pitiful. I only caught a glimpse of that face before the commercial came on. Why am I still watching TV? I'm going to be late. I powered off the TV as the program came back and Taiga looked as cheerful as ever. Throwing on just enough makeup to get by, I scampered out of the house. And though as I hurried to work, I couldn't get the image of Taiga's pained face out of my head. I was on my way to Taiga's scheduled location when a billboard caught my attention. There Taiga was on the advertisement for women's makeup. Half naked, he looked down upon the street with a sexy pose. Ooh, can they show us that picture? It was getting a lot of attention lately, since he was the first male model for women's makeup. Oh my god, look at that! He's so sexy! I wish my boyfriend was that cool! Girls waiting with me at the crosswalk pointed up at him and giggled. I wasn't about to deny that he was attractive. He was ripped and muscular, unlike most Japanese men. Ah, oh, you would never be able to tell with those clothes, but oh, that makes him even more appealing. I'm only 23 years old. He looked much more mature and sexy than his age implied. I'd like to get alone with him if you know what I mean. Their lively chatter and gossip continued. Shut the hell up. I thought I heard something familiar. It was the same irate voice that I had heard just the other day. I glanced nervously over to look at the source. Oh no, what are you doing being mean to your fans? Assholes. That was definitely Taiga. What are you doing? Don't be so effing loud, damn it. Taiga pulled some headphones out of his bag and put them over his ears. He began to bob his head along with the music. Since I was going to meet him, I thought it was a good idea to greet him now. But probably not, actually. Uh, but I'll greet him. I thought it would be awkward to just sit and stare at him. Hey, Taiga? I called out to him, but he didn't respond or even take notice of me. Of course not, he's wearing headphones. Taiga! This time I yelled out to him loud and clear. Taiga heard me and turned my way. When he saw my face, he pulled his headphones off and smirked. Taiga! Shh! Huh? 
and be quiet. He pushed his finger on my lips while showing me a charming smile. Please don't say anything. Tiger pulled back his finger from my lips. His face glowed with a radiant smile. It'll cause a scene if anyone notices it's me. He put his hands together as if begging me to stay quiet. It appears that he confused me for one of his crazy fans. I guess he hadn't recognized me after all. Unsure of how I felt by that, I cast my gaze to the ground. Well, what's wrong? You feeling alright? I'm fine. It took everything I had just to muster those words. It was so much of a shock that he didn't even recognize my face. To top it off, my heart was still racing from when he put his finger on my lips. Good. Oops, darn it, I skipped the line again. He flashed a smile at me as if relieved. I knew it was nothing more than his stage smile. Taga leaned toward me and put his face right next to my ear. <laughs> his warm breath over my chilled skin gave me goosebumps. Thanks. Hope we meet again. Oh, we will in about five minutes. After whispering into my ear, he hurried to the other side of the street when the light changed. Now I know for sure he hadn't recognized me. I watched his broad shoulders sway as he crossed. I wish he was drawn a little more manly like they say he is in here. The many sides of him flashed before my mind. His amiable stage face, his dark side, his sad face I saw on TV. A passing pedestrian bumped my shoulder while I daydreamed and snapped me out of it. I better hurry. Looking up at the billboard, my eyes met with Tyga's once more. Seeing him half-naked staring back at me was enough to make me short of breath. Even so, he was a star and I was nothing more than a stylist. Shaking my head to abandon the fantasies I had, I shuffled quickly across the street. The sight of what I saw looking back at me in the mirror at the studio horrified me. My hair was a mess, my skin looked awful, my eyes had ugly bags. Of course, that was all the result of rushing to work this morning. I went to makeup and borrowed a set from someone there. While putting on some lipstick, it finally occurred to me. I've been losing it lately. Whenever I'm running late, I skip my makeup and look a mess. Plus, not only was I late the other day, but once again today. This was beginning to turn into a real problem. Well, it's not your fault today you were called in late. You need to act professional around stars at all times. I remember the words my coworker shared with me when I started working here. Closing the lipstick cap with a snap, I let out a sigh. After thanking the person I borrowed it from, I head off in search of Tyga's room. When I found it, I stared at the letters of his name written on the door. I had met Tyga just a bit earlier, so he definitely should have arrived by now. I nervously tapped on the door. There was no response from the other side. Once again I knocked, this time more firmly. It's the really your stylist. Come in. A polite voice called out to me from inside. Excuse me. Taiga was sitting in a chair, reading a book when I entered. Good morning, I'm Dorilla, your stylist today. Good morning. Enthralled with the book, he spoke back without taking his eyes off it. I was surprised enough to catch him reading. A model like him, I figured, would just party and have fun all day. Looking down at his book, his eyelashes appeared so long it was almost surreal. He was without a doubt, a very handsome man. I had been staring at him for some time when he finally looked up at me. Our eyes briefly met. I was sure he caught me staring at him. When he noticed my face, his expression crumbled into disgust. Crap, you're that the really. Wait, do you recognize me in here now but you didn't recognize me on the street? Huh? He slammed his book shut with a pop and glared at me. Had he actually remembered me? The really D. You're the damn eavesdropper. I, uh... He had caught me so off guard saying my full name that I couldn't even form a sentence. Are you that big a moron that you can't even talk? N no I had just been so shocked that he remembered me. Didn't anyone tell you not to stare at people like that? I'm sorry. It looked like all that staring just upset him. Ask about meeting at the crosswalk? You know, when we met at the crosswalk... What crosswalk? He looked at me suspiciously. Does he have a twin brother? I don't remember seeing you. Right outside of here we met at the crosswalk. His eyes roll around as he tries to remember. Crosswalk? Oh yeah. He looks at me as if he finally remembered and leaned toward me. With his face right by my ear, he takes a whiff of my clothes. You're right. You do have the same smell. What smell? Like sewage. Oh, you jerk. N no way! 
I grab my shirt and take a huge whiff of it in disbelief. <laughs> huh? <laughs> You're a work of art. Taiga suddenly burst into laughter while doubling over holding his stomach. You don't have to laugh that hard. His laughter finally ended, and he turned to me with tears in his eyes. Oh, I haven't laughed like that in ages. Hmm? I was joking. You smell like soap. I love that smell. He reached forward and grabbed my cheeks between his hands. As if inspecting my face like a statue, his eyes studied me. Being stared at by him from so close made my heart pound in my chest like a drum. What happened to you? His hands felt colder and colder as my face warmed up with a blush. What happened? Your face looks so different now. Uh, I hadn't had on much makeup earlier, but the difference shouldn't have been that drastic. I hadn't done my makeup earlier. Oh. He flopped back into his seat with a thud and began reading his book again. Do I really look that different? Yeah, it's because I don't care. Huh? I'm not wearing contacts, and I'm not about to remember your face unless I care. Ah, so it's not a sight problem. Considering how we first met, I thought he would at least care a little. You could at least remember my face. Taiga cut me off with a curt and nasty remark. Shut up. Huh? You talk too much, garbage girl. Ugh. Garbage girl, that's my nickname. He cast a nasty look at me before returning his eyes back to his book. I could hardly believe how Rudy acted. Don't worry, I'll soften him up. Contrary to how he treated me, he looked like an absolute angel during the shooting. Try bringing the camera up. Get more of my face in the frame. <laughs> That's it. Wonderful. I think it's perfect. Watching him work, it seemed to me like he was straining to put up the facade. It seemed a bit depressing, I thought. Hey, stylist. For what reason was he trying so hard? Hey. He had a bad mouth and acted like a jerk sometimes. How long am I going to ignore him? The really? On the other hand, he seemed so handsome and friendly when he was laughing earlier. You! While I was lost in thought, Taiga had come up to me and gotten in my face. I'm talking to you, trash bag. Yeah, I should have responded at the really. Then maybe we wouldn't have gone back to the trash name. He grumbled to me in an angry voice. Don't you have a job to do? I've been calling your name for a while now. S sorry Taiga, is everything okay? One of the staff members called out to him from the other side of the room. Oh, I'm fine. I'm just getting some clothes ready. He answered in a jovial voice before turning around to glare at me. His expression went from happy to evil in an instant. Then go get me a hat, one that matches this outfit. Uh, okay. What kind do you want? You are the stylist. You decide. It's your job. I couldn't argue that. It was embarrassing enough to have zoned out in the middle of work. Got it. I'll bring one right away. You've got ten seconds. That's not even enough time to get there! What a devil! I hurried back to the waiting room. Why do they keep calling it waiting room? It's dressing room! Then why is it all girly stuff? A whole slew of hats were lying about. I see no hats. Do you? Ah, maybe those are hat boxes. Next to the purses. I debated on which style to pick. I shall pick a red Panama hat, which totally does not match what he's wearing, but that's what I have to choose. <laughs> I snatched up the red Panama hat and ran back to the studio. You're slow. Here. <sighs> Had I bought him back the wrong style? Hmm. Not bad for a girl that reeks like trash. You already told me you were teasing about that. I imagined that he meant he was okay with it. Yeah, I'm learning Taiga speak. Breathing a sigh of relief, I watched Dawn as he continued the shoot. Shouldn't he wear the hat? Come on. See, that totally would not go. A red hat would not go with this purple outfit here. The black knit hat would have gone much better. As he posed for the flashing cameras, I had to admit he looked good. After the shooting was over, Taka plopped down on a chair in the waiting room to read. I was curious as to what he could be so intent on reading. While organizing some clothes, I glanced at the cover of his book. It read, The Mountain Monk. It was a book I loved so much that I practically carried it everywhere. I even bought it today and dug through my bag to retrieve it. I wanted to show him, but was afraid he might get angry for disturbing him. Hmm, let's talk to him about the book. Um, Taiga? What? He looked up at me, irritated, but I continued anyway. 
That's a great book, isn't it? I have it too, look. Nice. It's dirty as hell. Uh, he was right, though. The cover of mine was stained yellow from use. What? Did you drop it in the toilet? N no, it's just worn from reading it so much. Nice. I was excited to see you reading the same book as me. He turned his eyes up at me cautiously. Hey, really? Yes? My heart skipped a beat when he called out my name all of a sudden. I was hoping he wasn't mad at me again. However, what he said next I wasn't expecting at all. What's with you? I waited anxiously to get chewed out by him again. After a moment of staring at me, he said something I hadn't expected. Aren't you scared of me? Nope, I'm working on you. Huh? The question was so sudden, I wasn't sure how to respond right away. I ask you a question. Aren't you scared of me? He slammed his hand down impatiently on the table. Did he scare me? Sometimes he did, but... I'm more curious than scared. What's that? What's that mean? I'm wondering which side of you is the real one. <sighs> and you remembered my name. I told you I'm not some stupid grandpa that can't remember what he ate for breakfast. And you laughed. At you? And only because you're a moron. Oh, he's blushing though! <laughs> Still, it made me think you might not be so bad after all. At first, he looked surprised to hear that. But after a second, a sinister grin pulled up at his lips. Ooh. That's the taiga I like. Oh, I get it now. What? You're some good little girl, and there's nothing about this world. Taiga stood up from his chair. You want me to show you? You want to see the real me? What do you mean by that? With a slight chuckle, he walked closer to me one step at a time. As he came closer and closer, I faltered back every step to match his. However, the room was small, and I quickly met the wall. His hands pushed against me, shoving me hard into the wall. Hey, a little gentler, please. Oh, are you still not afraid of me? He challenged me with a glare, bringing his face ever nearer to mine. I twisted my neck away as his face drew near. Look at me. No. Fine. Taiga took his right hand off me and bought it up. He grabbed my chin and pulled it forward to look at him. You wanted the real me. Here you go. Technically, I didn't say I wanted the real you. I said I wanted to know which one was the real you. But that's a moot point. A sinister smirk flashed before my eyes. I had no idea what was about to happen next. They should have shown this actor this line. Mm. His hair is darker all of a sudden. It was hard to breathe. I needed air. Mm. Ugh. When I opened my mouth to inhale, something warm slid into my mouth. It wrapped around my tongue. Taiga was stealing a kiss from me by force. As soon as I processed that thought. No! I pushed his body back with my arm as hard as I could. He stuttered and stumbled back a step. W what do you think you're doing? I tried to yell at him, but my words came out meek and quivering. The hell? You're boring. I'm leaving. My head and emotions in a jumble, I thought it best to get out of there. The work isn't over yet. He lunged forward and grappled my arm as I went to leave. Let go! I ripped my arm away from him, but pulled so hard that it smacked him in the face. <gasps> oh no. Oh. S sorry Turning around, I glanced at his face. Oh, don't tell me you got a welt. He wore the same somber face I saw on TV earlier this morning. My heart pounded hard in my chest when I saw it. I knew it. With his usual irritated face, he brushed past me as he left the room. I was left pondering the meaning of his words. You knew what? He knew that your stylist wouldn't like to be cornered like that? That's a normal reaction for most girls. Alright, well anyway, I want to read two episodes, so I don't know if I'm going to process them all in one day. So, hope to see you in that next episode. I can't wait to break Tyga down. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.